Well, again, uh, good afternoon once again. And as to continue your lunch, I'd like to personally thank Sienna um, and, and CenturyLink uh, for their sponsorship for today's meal. I think we all enjoyed it, so please give them a round of applause. And, and they are represented by Scott Barnett, Vice President and Defense Sales for CenturyLink, Bruce Hembry, Vice President and General Manager, North America, Sienna. So thank you very much for your support for this event as we go forward. <clears throat> Before I uh, introduce our, our keynote speaker, um, you know, I, I'd just like to uh, thank the DISA team. You know, as I look back through my career and I look at all the things that DISA, and it used to be the Defense Communications Agency when I was younger and certainly much more uh, in, in uh, need of learning. Um, but I started out my time in, in, the, in DCA PAC, Defense Communications Agency Pacific, as a watch officer in what was then called the RCOC, the Regional Communications Operations Center. And it was there, that was my first exposure to DISA. And I, again, when I get an opportunity at this event, I want to again thank everyone from DISA for the great things that you've done over the years. I was a branch chief after going out of the uh, RCOC, and I had some tremendous civilian employees. Those of you who've been with DISA any length of time would recognize some of the names like Cliff Yamada, Bob uh, Obishan, uh, and, and, and the like. And uh, they took this Marine and they really schooled him up on what the DISA and at the time DCA really was all about. Um, and what was not recognized at the time, there was tensions on the Korean Peninsula back in the early 80s, as there often was. And they put together a plan called Joint Monthly Channel Trunking and Switching, switching System, JIMTAS which was supposed to reconstitute the backbone in Korea should war break out and it be severed. And they were also, re remember these were the Cold War days, they were responsible for the HF restorals and the HF program as well as all the networks that went throughout the Pacific. And they did a tremendous amount of work as in uh, engineering and development. Then again, my, my next opportunity to work with DISA was during Desert Shield, Desert Storm when they delivered solutions for the Navy and the Marine Corps in terms of a GCCS that will allow us to speed up the delivery of the frag orders that were coming out of the Central Command Headquarters. Um, and they also managed the SATCOM assets that were out there and assets that, uh, that were vital to what we were doing. Then after that is the J6 Director of Command and Control Communication in the Pacific Command. Um, for the first time, the combatant, as a J6 for the combatant command, DISA shared the common operational picture that they were receiving up at Wheeler Air Force Base with, a, with uh, at the time, SYNCPAC and my staff on the, in the J6. There are tremendous partners in the cyber war, and a cyber war really started, kicked off with a, an exercise called Eligible Receiver in 97. And it was probably, it was the first opportunity where uh, an exercise was conducted against the networks of a United States combatant command. Um, and at my side to do all that was not only, my, my ace was uh, Admiral Norton out there, she was my cybersecurity uh, guru, but DISA PAC and, and Colonel Mike Harvey and his entire team were there to help us work through all the issues. To include spectrum management issues that were out in that theater, things that you didn't see on a day-to-day -day basis. They were responsible for the development of the architecture. They oversaw the implementation and the management and the running of all the networks across the Pacific. And if you ever traveled out to Hawaii, you have an appreciation for the tyranny of distance and the ability to be agile and quick and the ability to put things in. They ran the terrestrial networks in Korea. And again, they were partners in developing coalition C4 interoperability and, and capabilities in a theater that was particularly difficult, difficult because there was nothing like a NATO alliance. There were a bunch of bilateral alliances, or, or arrangements out there, and bilateral treaties. And again, then again, uh, when I was at J6 on the joint staff, uh, they provided tremendous support for strategic and operational planning uh, across the world, but particularly in the Central Command area responsibility. They were always there to, to provide us. The JTF GNO, which was part of the DISA at that time, um, was my right arm when it came to conducting this war and cyber operations. 
every, mor every uh, uh, morning we'd get a brief coming in for what was going on and they kept us engaged in what was going on. They are critical to the international spectrum agreements that were going on um, and, and continue to go on throughout the world. I think we all recognize that spectrum is a critical natural res uh, national and natural resource, uh, national resource. And it's really, uh, they, they did a great job in representing us in the forums, including the World uh, uh, Automated Radio Conference. Um, they also had a center of excellence uh, for J uh, J joint and coalition uh, operations. They did a lot of bilateral planning for, for, as, for the joint staff and the joystick, joint staff and the J6. Um, they also provided support and took a load off my back as they were heavily engaged in presidential and National Security Council uh, communications. And as I was in the Pacific and it was on the joint staff, uh, I had all four responsibilities for nuclear command and control uh, from the military, uh, the uniform side, uh, the combatant commander side and the joint staff side. And DISA was a tremendous partner. I could not have done the job that we had to do without them partnering with us, with us as we went along. And that included senior leader communications for the combatant commanders as they traveled around the world. And so they were instrumental, as you remember, back in the early, you know, back when they were instrumental in the early days of OIF and OEF and, and continue to this day to be responsible for the rapid provisioning of C4 case capabilities. And so uh, to the, I, I just want to go back and I want to thank the DISA team wherever you are in the organization for the great work that you have done and continue to do for this country. Um, in some cases, you're out of sight, but you're certainly not out of mind upon, uh, for those who call upon you and the services that you provide to our military and our Department of Defense. So again, I want to thank you very much for everything that you do day in and day out. So I have a round of applause for the Well, FCA enjoys working with the uh, Department of Defense and the COCOMs and agents and services we put on this symposium, as I said before. Um, and one of the key mission partners is DISA, and I think we all know that. And so we're honored to have as our keynote speaker today the director of DISA and the commander of the Joint Force Headquarters, Doden, Vice Admiral Nancy Norton, to present our opening keynote and start the discussion of our symposium here today. As a director of DISA, she manages a global network and leads more than 8,000 military and civilian personnel who plan, develop, deliver, and operate joint interoperable command and control capabilities and defend the enterprise infrastructure in more than 42 countries around the world. And I would add that to that team, there is a sizable number of contractors that go out there to support uh, that effort as well. And this mission directly supports, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, directly supports the President, the Secretary of Defense, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the combatant commanders, the Def Department of Defense components, and other mission partners across a spectrum of combat operations and combat support operations. As a commander of Joint Force uh, Headquarters, Doden, she's charged with direction and synchronization of the defense of cyberspace activities, providing unity of command, and unity of effort across the Department of Defense. She's responsible for organizing, training, equipping the military civilian staff who secure and operate and defend the Doden. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome me, well, uh, join me in welcoming Admiral Nancy Norton to the stage. Thank you so much. Thank you, General Shea. Thank you so much for, uh, for those kind remarks about uh, DISA and about me. You know, it's always wonderful to, um, to listen to General Shea and uh, have him go back in time and talk about what things were like when he was um, much younger and certainly when he was the PACOM J6. As he said, I worked for him when he was the PACOM J6. And what's interesting is, as he described it, it's amazing how many things haven't really changed. We have struggles with North Korea. We have uh, risks of the peninsula being cut off. We're always looking 
looking for more bandwidth. We're always looking for more SATCOM. Uh, you know, a lot of things just haven't changed in all of that time. So thank you for that introduction. I really appreciate you and General Wood being here and um, hosting this event for us. Uh, I appreciate AFSIA and the entire AFSIA team for putting this on and all of our industry hosts today. So this year's conference is, uh, theme is DISA and Doden in 3D. Go ahead, next slide. Uh, the 3D are driving innovation, delivering solutions, and defending the cyber domains. All three have an important role in, in providing the warfighter the best communication and information technology services worldwide. Everything we do at DISA in Joint Force Headquarters Doden is to support the warfighter and increase their ability to accomplish their mission. Next slide. So over the next three days, you'll have the opportunity to hear some of the best and brightest of uh, our speakers in DOD in the areas of cyber, innovation, and building solutions to support our warfighters. DISA and Joint Force Headquarters Doden uh, operations function in a build, operate, command and control, and defend model. DISA works closely with our industry partners to build and operate the network, to include many of you here today. And the Joint Force Headquarters Doden is chartered to command and control the network and to synchronize defense efforts across the entire Doden. Next slide. So let me start with driving innovation. One way we're doing that is through SETI, the Systems Engineering Technology Innovation Contract, where small and large businesses will benefit from, con from contracts. Our procurement directorate is poised to award both the full and open and the small business SETI suites in late May. We're also evolving DOD mobility solutions to achieve even better user experience, drive better productivity and flexibility in the DOD enterprise, and give our military the technology to conduct their operations more efficiently from around the globe. We have a dedicated innovation team of 10 people working to find the best ideas and capabilities and to test the possibilities. Here are just a few of the things we're working on. Assured identity. Prototype devices for establishing assured identity are being developed right now. The first few will arrive this summer to assist with determining the right test parameters, and in the fall with the distribution of 75 devices. A separate prototype will provide DOD pilot users with a more convenient alternative to using a CAC for authentication, decryption, and signing operations in Microsoft Windows PC environment. Derived credentials will be unlocked using continuous multi-factor authentication on mobile devices. Blockchain represents a framework that will usher in a new era of transparency and interconnectivity among organizations where authority and control is decentralized and decisions are made by consensus. DISA is exploring the implementation of this technology for the DOD as a possible new capability in the future. In the electromagnetic spectrum, the superiority there is clearly a warfighting imperative, as General Shea talked about. The EMS is an integral part of the information battle space, and a comprehensive understanding of all of our EMS activity is essential, given the requirements for increased battle tempo, agile operations, coordination, training, and surgical targeting in population-dense and highly complex environments. DISA is supporting the Spectrum Research and Development Program uh, processes which include recommending a portfolio management plan to enable the development and implementation of innovative spectrum technologies and tools which may reduce DOD's spectrum requirements or improve our ability to share spectrum with the commercial world. Next slide. DISA is delivering solutions, lots of them. Let me highlight a few. First, JRSS, or the Joint Regional Security Stack. Deploying JRSS has centralized the security of the network into regional architecture instead of locally distributed architectures at each military base post camp and station. Each physical stack is comprised of racks of security equipment which detect and block malicious activity and enable big data analytics. This is allowing DOD 
components to ingest and process data that analysts will use to make sense, increase cyber awareness, and build better defenses. The Encore 3 contract is poised to award the small business suite in May. This $350 million multiple award five-year blanket purchase agreement will enable the agency to consolidate its requirements for professional support services into a singular contract that will improve our effectiveness and efficiency with the ability to track the total professional support services expenditures for the agency. DEOS, the Defense Enterprise Office Solutions, uh, draft RFP went out to industry in April, and comments were due back on May 7th. We received 137 questions and comments that the program office and the procurement office are now reviewing for necessary changes. We greatly appreciate and thank all the participants for the comments, as listening to previous feedback really drove this RFP. We anticipate the final RFP to industry during the fourth quarter of FY18. The estimated award ceiling for this single award IDIQ is $7.8 billion. We recently updated the procurement forecast for all of our contracting opportunities and posted it to the DITCO webpage, so I urge you to go look at that DITCO webpage and, uh, and see what else is available. DISA is also the DOD agency responsible for the design, build, test, field, operate, maintain, and secure of the National Background Investigative Services. Some of the NBIS capabilities include collection and validation of submitted information, validation of previous security clearance investigations, the ability to maintain end-to-end -end situational awareness and command and control using an integrated case management system with automated workflow, and automatic validation of data from multiple sources. This is going to dramatically improve how we, our government conducts our background investigations. And you can see an INBIS uh, demonstration at DISA's booth today. DISA is also enabling the DOD's rapid transition to the cloud via the Mill Cloud 2.0 capability that went live in January. This is the contractor-owned and operated on-premise cloud. As you know, there's a Mill Cloud symposium that's going on concurrently this week, and it quickly sold out, so there's definitely a lot of interest in this. We're excited to share the great work and strides our team is making and look forward to seeing you at the, the symposium. Next slide. The third D is defending the cyber domain. Uh, I am dual-hatted in my role as both the director of DISA and the commander of the Joint Force Headquarters Doden. The Joint Force Headquarters Doden was established to achieve unity of command of all 42 DOD components that conduct Doden operations and defense. This is essential to enable those that use and rely on the Doden to operate as a unified joint force. The Doden is our battle space, and if we aren't defending that battle space, it could put others in harm's way. We must be ready to take action at a moment's notice. We are engaged in phase two operations every day in cyberspace. Our ability to move and share information is critical at every level of command across the department. Our role is to ensure and enable communication and information technology services anywhere, in any environment, to support a more lethal military. As technology continues to evolve, we will remain vigilant in defending the Doden against uh, against daily persistent attack, attacks and attempts. Every day, our adversaries are trying new ways to disrupt our mission. In one month, there are more than a billion defensive cyber operation events, and three billion emails come, through, come to our door every day, I mean every month, but 82% of those are actually blocked as malicious emails or spam emails. We have over 2,000 countermeasures that are exercised in defending the Doden every month. Next slide. But the best part of the three Ds are really our people that are making it all happen. I'm incredibly proud to lead the dedicated, diligent, and driven people of DISA and Joint Force Headquarters Doden. I'm the only one that's dual-hatted in DISA and Joint Force Headquarters Doden. It's a wonderful role that I have because of the synergy between the two organizations. 
DISA is an agency with about 8,000 government people. The majority are civilians, and about 1,700 of those are military. They're spread across the globe, including WACA and our field offices. We have approximately the same number of contractors as well, and many of you have contractors that support us. The Joint Force Headquarters Doden is much smaller. There are about 150 government civilians and military members. We are expected to grow those numbers in the next few years as cybersecurity needs increase, but not, not by a whole lot. In many ways, my role is really to be the mentor and guide for these fantastic people. We have incredible people who are incredibly talented and doing the work to, to uh, enable our mission partners every day. As you saw up here on stage, not only are they talented in IT, but they're also talented in singing. So can I get another round of applause for our fantastic singers? Next slide. So DISA's capabilities and programs continue to change as technology evolves. We strive to be as agile as our mission partners demand and to remain vigilant in defending the Doden against persistent attempts and attacks. DISA delivers innovative information technology services and support to the DOD through enterprise services and unified capabilities, MIL Cloud 2, and mobility. DISA and Joint Force Headquarters Doden need the best ideas, products, and services industry has to offer to support our warfighters. We want partners with innovative solutions that surpass current technology with a focus on mission effectiveness, cybersecurity, and mobility. We also need the best people with the skills and attitude ready to tackle the challenges of today and of the future. We support a global warfighter, and their missions require secure, reliable services and capabilities. As you've all heard, SecDef's lines of effort are uh, increasing lethality across the department, increasing our partnerships, and reforming the department. We at DISA and Joint Force Headquarters Doden are enabling all three of those lines of effort every day in the work that we do. Events like this definitely support showing what kind of capabilities that we are, are uh, delivering so that we can in increase the lethality. And we're also increasing our partnerships just by being here. Uh, General Shea made a point of talking about how involved that we have been from DISA and Joint Force Headquarters Doden. That's because we recognize how important this kind of relationship is with our mission partners and with all of our industry partners as well. That is a critical partnership for us. And we are always working to reform and become more efficient through the kinds of capabilities and innovation that we, that we are driving and delivering. So thank you for being here. Uh, please take advantage of all the opportunities that you have this week to meet with us and our, our leadership here and talk to our mission partners as well. We have a lot of subject matter experts here and we, we want to learn as much as we can from you and want you to learn as much as we can you can from them. So thank you very much and I'm eager to take your questions. Thank you, thank you ma'am. First question, what technology priorities are near the top of your list of near-term needs? The, the ones that I would say are the top of my priority leads all, all are about agility. How do we um, adapt to changing needs for our warfighters as quickly as the requirements change from the mission partners? So whether that is mobile solutions where we can uh, enable our mission partners to, to work from anywhere regardless of whether or not there's a, um, a significant infrastructure in the area or uh, allowing them to um, operate in very, very new environments and um, new requirements or as we were talking at the table earlier, uh, at allowing our infrastructure to actually adapt to our needs in things like software-defined networks and, and adaptation for our bandwidth requirements or our SATCOM requirements so that when something new happens, we're not starting from the beginning of a procurement process to deliver those new solutions two years from now. Thank you. Next question. What is DISA doing to ensure your small business goals are met? 
Well, for those of you who, who's, who's here representing a small business? Raise your hand. Okay, first of all, that's it, because we have a lot of you here in the audience. You are part of this conversation. Uh, we have an incredibly active small business office, and um, I couldn't be prouder of the small business office and the work that that small business office has done to reach out to small businesses across the industry and make sure that you understand the requirements that we have and and we understand the kinds of offerings that you have that you can provide for us. That is an ongoing dialogue. It has to be an ongoing dialogue, a constant interaction. Uh, you can't meet small business goals by just showing up. You have to be engaged all of the time. And that's what our, our small business office has really done. And by, uh, by doing that work, we have kept you part of every one of our conversations in our contracts. And I am very, very proud to say that we have met or exceeded our small business goals for, uh, I think, six years in a row now. Pretty impressive. Ma'am, we haven't received any more questions, so that was our final question for you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome General Shea back to the stage to formally thank Admiral Norton on behalf of ASEA and the audience. Well, thank you very much. Well, again, I want to thank Admiral Norton. I think where she set the tone here. You've heard the themes of what where the focus of this is going forward, and I think the theme that we all heard that we really, uh, really uh, appreciate and understand is the ability to be agile and going quickly. That's kind of the nature of the world that we're in, and it's, it's refreshing to see that she's identified that is one of the key targets uh, going forward, the ability to be agile and to move in this rapidly moving world. So again, thank you, Admiral Norton, for joining us here today. And in lieu of a speaker gift, AFCO will make a donation to Fisher House on your behalf. Thank you again very much. Thank you, sir. OK, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the year we're doing things a little bit differently. In the opening, the exhibit hall immediately after this session, uh, we'll take a short dessert break at this time. Dessert, sponsored by Fortinet, will be served in the exhibit hall. We also have the Meet the Dissa PMs event, the first set of signal innovation showcase presentations, and the first batch of sessions in the exhibit hall theaters. We'll reconvene back here at 345, 1545 for those in un uniform, for a panel on collaboration to drive innovation. Moderated by Mr. Stephen Wallace, the Chief Technology Director of DISA's Development and Business Center. And we'll move into the exhibit hall to, cl to close the day with our technology networking uh, discussion. So thank you all very much.